G'day everyone and welcome to the second of my video explainers. This time I've been asked a question which I reckon virtually every lawyer has been asked at least once and that is how do you live with the fact that you may be representing really bad people and trying to keep them out of jail even when you know that's where they belong. How can you represent someone if you know that they're guilty? It's a really good question and one that the legal profession has grappled with for years. Let me try to explain. The starting point is one of our basic principles of justice and one that you've heard me talk about before. Everyone is presumed to be innocent until the moment they're pronounced guilty by a court. So if a person walks into a lawyer's office and asks for help, or if they call for the cells and ask from the cells and ask for help, then in the eyes of the law, that person at that time is an innocent person. Now, that might seem a bit hard to swallow, but let's consider the alternative. If I was asked to provide representation to somebody and I decided to say no because they're guilty as hell, then doesn't that mean that I've kind of appointed myself to be the judge without even hearing the witnesses or reading the evidence? Do you want to be judged that way by a lawyer's gut instincts? This is why barristers who are the lawyers specialising in courtroom law have a traditional rule called the CAD rank rule. If a client is brought to a barrister and the matter is within the barrister's competence, the barrister is available and the client can pay the normal fee, the barrister must take the case. Our job as lawyers is to bring people before the courts and to argue our best and then to trust the judge, the magistrate and the jury to decide on guilt or innocence. The second thing I'd say is that there's a difference between doing something wrong and committing a criminal offence. For a criminal offence to be committed, the elements of the crime must be proven by evidence without any defence applying. Sometimes people may think they've committed an offence when they actually haven't. And sometimes people may be convinced that they've done the right thing when they've actually committed an offence. So just because a client walks in the door and says, I've committed an offence, doesn't necessarily mean that they have. You'd want to do some illegal analysis first. Let me give you an example. Let's say our defendant was approached in the street by someone acting very aggressively and waving their fists around. Our defendant became very scared and punched the guy before the scary guy could punch him. Our defendant may well be convinced that he's committed an assault. As a lawyer though, I'd be looking to see first whether the act might be excused as self-defence. Okay, now some of you are still saying, dude, I do not buy this. You are still looking at going into court with someone who has done bad, bad stuff and trying to get them off. How do you live with that? Well, the next thing for me to tell you is that if it's really clear that a client has committed the offence, either because they admit it or because the prosecution case is just that strong, then any decent lawyer is going to tell the client about the substantial advantages that come from pleading guilty. You see, a client who pleads guilty, and particularly a client who pleads guilty early and assists the police, can look forward to a much lesser sentence than a client who pleads not guilty, but gets convicted anyway. This is why the vast majority of criminal matters proceed by way of a guilty plea. Many times, it's the lawyers helping the guilty client to see that pleading guilty will provide the best outcome for them. So most of the time when you have a guilty client, they're going to plead guilty and you work on getting an appropriate sentence. What happens then if the client wants to plead not guilty? Well, it's pretty fundamental that nobody can plead guilty except the client themselves. If they want to plead not guilty, that's their right. If they do so, there's two pathways the lawyer can take. The first pathway is what's called putting the prosecution to its proof. In that situation, the defendant who has the right to remain silent, remains silent and effectively challenges the prosecution to prove the offence. If a defence lawyer is instructed to put the prosecution to its proof, they won't bring any evidence before the court at all. What they will do is test the evidence which the prosecution brings before the court. So, if there's CCTV footage which the prosecution says is of my client, I might challenge that and demand that the prosecution prove that the footage is of my client. The second way to conduct a defence is what's known as a positive defence. This is where the defendant actually asserts their own version of what they say happened. An alibi, I wasn't even there at the time, is a classic version of a positive defence. Now, a positive defence almost always requires the defendant to forego their right to silence because it's obviously pretty hard to put up any evidence of your own 
while staying silent. Either way though, there are a few rules which the lawyer must follow. First and foremost, the lawyer's highest duty is not to the client, but instead to the court. So the solicitor or barrister must not knowingly lie to the court. And if they know that the defendant or a witness that they have brought before the court has been lying to the court, then they must go to that person, the defendant or the witness, and demand that the record be corrected. If that person refuses, the lawyer must, no option, they must withdraw from the case. It is absolutely vital for judges to know that they are not being lied to by legal practitioners. What this means is that if your client has told you they committed the offence, as a lawyer you can really only put the prosecution to its proof. You can't mount a positive defence because that would almost certainly involve lying to the court. So if a lawyer has a guilty client, their first advice will be to plead guilty. If the client refuses, even though they acknowledge their guilt, the lawyer may put the prosecution to its proof, but may not, under any circumstances, lie to the court. In 2014, the Premier and Attorney General of Queensland both referred to lawyers who represent bikies as hired guns. The Premier said, they take money from people who sell drugs to our teenagers and young people. Yes, everybody's got a right to be defended under the law, but you've got to see, see it for what it is. They're part of the machine, part of the criminal gang machine, and they will see, say, and do anything to defend their clients and try to get them off and indeed progress their case. The Premier's statement was nothing more than offensive nonsense. A lawyer who gives their best effort to advise a guilty client is in fact assisting the court to do justice because that defendant is receiving sensible professional advice and their case is going to be brought before the court in a proper way so that the judge and the jury can see all of the facts, hear all of the arguments and then do justice. That's how we live with ourselves. I hope that helps people to explain what is always a really controversial aspect of legal ethics. As always, these explainers are presented as legal education and not legal advice. If you're concerned about the ethical behaviour of a lawyer that you have dealt with, you should contact the Law Society for Solicitors and the Bar Association for Barristers in your state or territory. If you have a question that you'd like answered on any topic of law, I'd love to hear from you by email at anthony.marinac at gmail.com.